covenant. He's sending you to a region that is under the new covenant. God is sending you under the hidden treasures and the precious treasures that he has placed for you in your life. God is shifting you out of places, out of the lands, out of the covenants. And God says, if I don't shift you, the old will try to suffocate you. Go to Bethlehem. I already knew this day will come. I already knew that what I have to do. That's why I put Jesse and his household in Bethlehem. That's why I make sure that Saul doesn't reign over that region. Because that's a region kept holy for my appointments. The Lord wants you to know what he's about to do and what he's about to shift you into. He is going to deposit his glory and honor in you, and he will shift you into a higher places and is seated beside the Lord himself. Nothing of this world, even the former anointing, can take its course and stop you in this battle because the Lord said what he said, and the battle is already won. It is finished, it is done, it is written, and it is final. You don't need to be afraid of anything to receive the precious gift from the Lord. He's calling you to a table. He's sending a fresh fire and anointing. Do you? That no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither enter the mind of man, but the Lord has stored for those who seek him. Amen. There is nothing in your past that can touch this rainbow word. This manner that God is feeding you today, God has already overcome the past for you. And the future that wants to hinder you has been under, been under his feet before you were born on this earth. He said our future is his past. He said our future is God's past. There is nothing that he has not seen yet. But we haven't seen it yet. Your future is only his past. He's not worried about your future. He's worried about your obedience to who you're supposed to be. That's right. God tells Samuel, take a heifer. This is a call, just in case you want to know. Sorry? I know. I'm just trying to make sure people don't think I'm cursing in the church. Take a heifer with you when you get down. Yeah, tell the folks down there you are here to sacrifice and unto the Lord. God does things in a way that no one can ever stop his perfect will. You see, the thing is, the people in Bethlehem knew that when the prophet shows up, there must be trouble. <laughs> the prophet didn't show up down back in those days to say, Oh, God is going to give you the houses that you did not build. <laughs> that, was it. that says the Lord. And God says, And Bethlehem was afraid when Samuel showed up. Is God against us? But God already not in the plan. He says, bring, take a cow with your young captain with you. And say, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to bless. When God sends us to places, he asks us to bless them. New seasons, blessing. New seasons to take them in a blessing. Because God says, take this effort. And say, I'm here to give a sacrifice. The Lord wants you to look back to the last time where he brought you out. But this is the last time that God wants you to look. I'm delivering a message from the throne of God to you. Today is your last time that you look back to what you used to be in order to get to where you need to be. Because the plane is about to take off. November is knocking on the door. And God doesn't want you to be missing the flight. Two things God is looking for us today to do is to bring our best sacrifice and then give it to him. No, he's not looking for you to bring an animal, no money. No, he's looking for you to bring your life as a living sacrifice before him. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, Amen. holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And do not be conferred, conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. He's sending you to Bethlehem. 
and say, bring a sacrifice. Because I am going to bring out of you a kingdom that is not transformed by this world, but is conformed and transformed by the renewing of your mind by the Lord himself. Hebrews 13, 15 says, Through him, therefore, let us consistently and at all time offer up God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips, thankfully acknowledging and confessing and glorifying his name. I was sharing this morning over a coffee. I said, God gives us visions. And we enter into the vision and we're floating in the presence. Then we come out of the vision and then he says, now you have to want it. Daily. You have to want it daily. That's what the scripture tells us here. That's what the scripture tells us here. And interesting enough, I don't even remember, I had the scripture here and I was sharing this conversation. Give yourself every day praise offering. Give him the fruit of your lips. Confess what God has done in you. Daily confess what he has done. Acknowledge him to bring glory and honor to him. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge the gift that God has given you. Acknowledge the life that God has brought for you. Acknowledge not just your salvation. Acknowledge everything that he has blessed you with. Acknowledge the love that God has placed in your life. Acknowledge everything that God has done in you. And praise him for it. Because if you don't praise him, it will be stolen. That's why it says it's a sacrifice of praise. It's hard to praise. That's why you have to sacrifice your time. You have to sacrifice your wants. I know you're busy in your daily activities, but it requires for you to take five minutes and say, I'm going to give you praises. I will sing praises unto your name, O Lord. I will sing praises unto your name, O Lord. Be thankful and acknowledge and confess them. God told Samuel, go down there and bring an offering, a living sacrifice, which is a form of worship. But it's time the king that God wanted to anoint had to be a worshiper in spirit and truth. The first time God anointed Saul to be a king, there was no worship. It was just a pouring of an anointing. But this time, this king that is going to be anointed to be a king, he is going to be a worshiper before he's a king. He knows how to worship God. So bring the sacrifice. Before you do anything, bring the worship unto me. God is asking you today, what are you holding back that needs to be sacrificed for you? What are you holding so tight in your life that God said, sacrifice this for me because I'm looking to crown you, but I'm looking for a worshiper. Someone that is willing to sacrifice what is so dear to them. I did it, not me, God. I sacrificed my son on the cross. What makes you better than me? If I sacrifice my son on the cross, that you will be made whole. Why can't you sacrifice what is dear to your heart? That's right. But I can make you whole. Amen. Because what I'm about to do is this anointing has to be in spirit and in truth. That's right. It has to be moved with the Holy Ghost and it has to be the Word of God. Yeah. The truth is the Word of God. The truth is the Word of God. You cannot have the Holy Spirit without the Word of God and you cannot have the Word of God without the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. That's right. Amen. It's impossible. Amen. There are one. How can you separate them from each other? How can you separate them? That's why philosophers read this. Philosophers read this, great. They probably know more scriptures to quote than I am you. But they don't understand it because they don't have the spirit. That's why Jesus says, only those who are of mine, they will understand what I'm talking about. 
Yes. This becomes a good word. This becomes a good literature when the Spirit is not there. But when the Holy Spirit is moving, it's no longer a literature. It's living. The Word of God is living. It's active. And it's powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It will divide the marrow from the soul and the flesh. It will bring glory and honor to His holy name. That's what it will do. So Samuel went to the house of Jesse and God told him after the first time, listen to me, they Samuel, we need to talk about this. You are still looking with your worldly eyes. You are not understanding what I'm about to do. I'm not looking from the outside. I'm looking for the... Somebody listened to the message a few months ago. God wants to give us insight. He doesn't care about the outside. Samuel, you're still looking with your eyes. You see the first time coming. Wow, he's tall. He's mighty. He got six packs and he had the muscles all over. And he's looking honky donkey and all those things. But I'm not looking for that. He had that already in his soul. I'm looking for the anointing. I'm looking for a worshiper. Look at the heart. A life of living sacrifice unlocks the anointing to flow and the Spirit of God will fill you over and over again. In the words, in the other words, don't look at the things that can offer, that they can offer you. Look at what God can pour out. Because here it was, here it was, Samuel, I thought this was full. Why is it not coming out? Why is it not coming out? No. I'm looking for the one that is full of the Spirit. And it's after my own heart. Because this oil cannot be unlocked by talents, gifts, this anointing. Only be released by those who desire me more than the old life, than the old lives. The former oil, the former anointing was released because of their needs, but the new anointing is only released for those who diligently seek of me. Don't look for people pour oil over you when you're not willing. To testify of who he is. You can be the most talented person in this world, but if you go in your own strength and power, you will you will still not be able to accomplish what God has called you to be in your life. It requires, but it has only to be done with God to be accomplished through God. The saddest thing in ministry is, and I see this too often in ministry, unfortunately. Many people try to do the calling without the Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> That's right. And they get frustrated eventually in the fall. Yes. yes. In all various temptations of life. Mm. I see that way too often, and my heart breaks. And that's why I told you, I said, you better know that you know that you know that you're anointed by God. Yes. And that you're not inspired by God. Mm. Mm. Folks, hear what I just said. Yes. Make sure you're anointed by God. That's inspired by God. We have a lot of people who are inspired by the move of God, but they're not anointed by God. Yes. Wow. Because there will come the time in your life that the devil will check you whether you're real or you're just inspired. So true. Very true. Yes. He will check you. And if you're inspired, he says, check. But if you're anointed, you will push through. The enemy hopes you will go in your own power. He hopes you will think that you're you're flashy enough. 
you're savvy enough, you're talented enough, you're impressive enough, you're charismatic enough to make people think that you're all that and whatever you are not. Oh yeah, our charisma can take us a long way. Our charisma can help do a lot of stuff because we become performers, not worshippers. The devil wants you to be impressive, not leaning on God and leaning on your own understandings. But the scripture is very clear. It is not by power. It is not by might. It is by his spirit, says the Lord. Some trust in horses, other folks trust in chariots. Today, we don't have those things. So some trust today in horoscope and others believe in spirituality as a God's move. But not us. We trust in the name of the Lord, Amen. God Almighty. Yes. Amen. Come on, team. I'm done. God wants you to go from Revelation. If you, if, you don't have, if you don't have to see anything, you see this one. This is very extremely important. I want you to I want you to I want you to put this down. I want you to write this down. I want you to write this down. It's extremely important. This word came to me Saturday morning because something happened to me Friday night and and I and I and I, and I said I need to go to Turkey. But I said, I need to go to Patmos first. Yeah. I need to go to Patmos, then I gotta go to Turkey. I just said it, I blurted it out. I just said it like that. And then the Lord spoke to me, he says, you need to go from revelation to proclamation. Yeah. That's why you said it. So, revelation is... Many people get stuck at the revelation. They do not know what to do with it. You need to walk out of you need to walk it out. You need to live it out and you need to release it. John, the revelator in Patmos, got the revelation of the seven churches that were in Turkey. He manifests by sending the letter out to them. He didn't get stuck in the revelation. He started proclaiming the revelation. Mm. And the Lord says, the reason you manifest that out of your mouth, that you need to go to Patmos and then go to Turkey, is because you got to go from revelation to proclamation. Mm. You need to release what was received, now in action, what needs to take place, because the hour has come. Mm. The seven churches are going to face what they needed to face mm. in the end times. Mm. Wow. The time has come. Folks, don't think the time is not near. The time is very near. Knock, knock. The door is knocking. Yeah. The Lord has said in First Peter, the time has come that the judgment of God is coming to the church first before the judgment of God goes to the world. Yes. And God told me this very clearly. He said to me this morning, he says, and that's why I told you you need to go to Patmos, then go to Turkey, because I'm going to let you go to every single city and proclaim what you have read about, and then I will move in my mind. Mm. Seven churches. The seven churches. Seven places. And for those people who love CNN and the media out there, let me fix the, their ideology according to the scripture. The Bible talks about Asia. The seven churches was not in China. It was in Turkey. Yes. So Asia is not China. It's not the Orient. Asia is from Israel to Japan. Two thirds of Russia down to Indonesia. So when we talk about Asia or Asians, please don't look at your Chinese friends and Korean friends. <laughs> They're all part of it. I'm an Asian too. He's an Asian too. No, he's kidding me. He's not Asian. Wow. He's not Asian. Wow. No, I have to correct it. No, I have to correct it. Because the definition of Asian means yes. Yes. Someone that is born on the continent of Asia. Yeah. Right. If you're born on the continent of Asia, you are called Asian. Yes. It doesn't mean that you're from Far East. It's in the Bible. Yeah. To the seven churches of Asia. So if anybody tells you 
that Asia is only the Far East, that no, my Bible tells me Asia is bigger than the Far East. The longest, the, the largest continent. Mm. The Lord told me, says, says, you need to go from Revelation to Proclamation. Many people get stuck at Revelation and do not know what to do with it. You need to walk it out. You need to live it and you need to release it. Folks that are in Revelation, because they're seated in the high places in Christ Jesus, they don't pray asking from earth to heaven. They pray down heaven to the heart and declare the word of God. I want to say this to you again this morning. People who are in Revelation, they are seated in heavenly places, that according to the scripture, with Christ Jesus, they don't pray from a defensive mode on earth to heaven. They pray in authority out of heaven to earth. Amen. Amen. That's right. The reason that you've been praying for too long in defensive mode is because you're not living your revelation. You're living in miseries of your life. It's a word. It's not me. It's a word. We need to pray down heaven to earth, not, not polluting with our sea, carbon dioxide heaven. That's what we do in our prayers, by the way. Just in case you did not know, every time we complain, we're releasing carbon dioxide in heaven instead of releasing oxygen to earth. That's what God wants us to do. Stop praying out of revelation. Stop talking about things that the Lord says is finished. It is done. It is complete. Stop praying from that position of being seated in the high places. Apostle Paul didn't declare to heaven about his condition on earth while he was in jail. He declared to earth his condition in heaven where he was seated in heavenly places in the presence of God. He didn't say to them, oh, by the way, I'm writing you this letter from the prison in Ephesus or in Corinth or wherever I went. I'm writing this letter to you from high places where I'm sitting beside Christ Jesus because there is nothing that can bind me on earth that cannot be released out of heaven. I'm speaking to you out of authority. I'm not speaking to you out of my misery. Also, Paul wrote letters out of the prison and he witnessed and he declared about the condition of heaven on earth. He didn't declare of the condition of earth to heaven. I wish we had that witness in us this morning that it is time for us to start declaring things like Apostle Paul did. He wrote to the Corinthian church while he was in Ephesus. He says, I know that there is an adversary in, in Ephesus against me. However, I see an afflictive door, an effective door and the service of the Lord has opened up before me. I know the promise of God is true. Hey, listen, current church, I know what you want, but I know what God is about to do. I don't care what you want. I will send Timothy to you. I will send somebody else to you, but I am in Ephesus. I'm going to remain in Ephesus because I've seen this door that God has opened before me and I don't care who is my adversary. There's many adversaries that are against me but I'm declaring on earth what is in heaven and God has me here for a purpose to serve his people and I'm not moving one bit until Pentecost comes. And we read that word said until Pentecost comes, until the day of Pentecost because the next text that he wrote says I will remain in Ephesus until Pentecost. And we read it so loosely. <laughs> but let's get a little more deeper in it for a second. It says, let me rephrase it. I'm not going to move out of this place until the Spirit of God has pierced everything and smashed everything because Pentecost represents the outpouring. Yeah, there might be, all, there might be an adversary against what God is about to, to do in my life. But I'm not going to move until there's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, until there's an outpouring of the anointing of God, until there's a release in God. I'm not going to move anywhere. I'm going to remain where I am because I know what God has called me to be. Yeah, I might be in jail, but I'm not in jail. I am in high places with the Lord. And the promises of God are yes and amen. And they're coming to pass. They're coming to pass. They're coming to pass. Can you say the story of this? They're coming to pass. They're coming to pass. They're coming to pass. This morning, as we're going to be singing, I want you to take a few moments. 
Yeah. Make some serious decisions this morning. You want freedom? Make the change. Have a funeral service for your pain. Have a funeral service for your past. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord gives us and the Lord takes away. Make that decision now. Make that decision now. As our team is going to be singing. And the Lord has given me this word that I'm going to pray for all of you who sincerely made that decision this morning. That he wants to take you to a place that you go from revelation to proclamation to manifestation each and every day of your life. And I'm going to release that anointing over you this morning. But while they're singing, quietly, sing to the Lord Jesus. What do I say? Word of long good. As they're singing the song, reflect. Holy Spirit, pray right now. The sound of my voice, I declare each and every person in this house of God, they go to a moment of reflection. Reflection of their past, reflection of their pain, reflection of the old wine, and reflection of the old anointing. The reflection of things that they've said is God while it was their choice. Lord, I release them right now that they will make the decision. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, the Lord gives them and the Lord takes away. And as the Lord has praised in this ministry, we sound to them, you speak to them and make them that, make that decision as we will pray with them for our point of your mountain. Jesus.